Have you ever wondered how you're actually going to handle friends and family when they and their children come banging on your door and begging for food after SHTF? Today's video is going to tackle that subject right after the channel intro. Shot fired. Shot fired. Shot fired. Ambulance the roof. Welcome to this channel. This channel is all about learning how to prepare for when the dark times come and the grocery stores are stripped bare. And today we're going to talk about some solutions on what you can do with loved ones and friends who show up to your house after SHTF begging for food, even though you warned them to not show up. So to kind of set up the context for this video, some kind of an event has happened and our economy has collapsed and food is no longer being delivered to our grocery stores. And then all of the people who were pretty open about their prepping to non-preppers, they've all heard the same thing from friends and family members. If SHTF happens, I'm coming to your house. And then of course, many of those preppers told them not to come to their house because they've only got enough food to feed their own family. Now I hear many preppers say that they're just going to turn these people away should this happen. Then I also hear some preppers say that they'll turn these people away at gunpoint if need be. But I think that if you're one of these people who say this, that you may be fooling yourself and here's why. I just don't think that the majority of preppers will be able to flat out turn away loved ones after SHTF, let alone actually shoot a loved one who's refusing to leave. And I'm not talking about people that's becoming violent with you, but just refusing to leave because they're so starved and desperate and they know that you have food. Just think about it. When you've got a neighbor that you've lived next door to for years and you've genuinely liked this neighbor, or when that family member shows up and they're carrying a baby, or one of your favorite aunts or uncles shows up, etc. But how many of you that right now during normal times that say that you're going to be able to turn these people away, how many of you that say that will actually be able to do it when that moment of truth arrives? I honestly think that the majority of you that say right now that you'll turn everybody away, I think that when that time comes that you just won't be able to turn your heart cold enough to do it. Now please don't misunderstand me and think that I'm talking in absolutes. There are always exceptions to every rule. There are some people out there that are completely cold hearted and could easily turn away even your own adult child and their baby. But I'm talking about the normal person here, the person that does have some degree of empathy for others in that they would have a hard time turning away a loved one that was honestly starving and had come to their house as a last ditch effort to save themselves or their family from starvation. And then really quick before we get to the solutions to this problem, here is another risk for preppers regarding the people that they do turn away. What are you going to do when they return with actual evil intentions in their heart? When they return with the plan of forcefully taking your food so that they can eat and feed their own family? Folks, don't kid yourselves. These starving people that you turn away, when they return out of pure desperation, they're not going to knock on your door and kindly announce that they're there to forcefully take your food and give you the chance to shoot them. When you turn them away the first time, they're going to become angry because what's left of the government will probably be making false promises that things will return back to normal soon and the person that you turned away will also probably be having thoughts that life will soon return back to normal. And they're going to be believing that you're dooming them and their children to die from starvation when you've got plenty of enough food to get you and their family through until the government can get food delivered again. So we just have to face it. These people who you love or loved and who love you or once loved you may now be angry with you because they think you are the one doing them wrong. Instead of realizing that their thinking is incorrect because they had time to prepare before SHTF and they failed to do so. So let's face it, once you've turned these people away, you're not going to be able to sleep or use the restroom or come down with any kind of an illness or anything. 
because you are going to have to be so on top of your self-preservation game that honestly, almost nobody will be able to pull it off. So how do preppers, the preppers who told all of their friends and family that they are preppers, how do they mitigate this problem should SHTF hit and these loved ones come knocking on their door? Well, the first things that you're going to need to do is, number one, make sure that you're worth more alive than dead to these people, and then number two, then turn these people into an asset rather than a problem. And let me explain just one way that this can be done. First, during these normal times pre-SHTF, you're gonna wanna choose just how many people that you would want at your house after the balloon goes up. And to help you come up with this number, you'll wanna think about just how many people that you would need to do gardening and other survival chores. Plus, you'd also wanna think about how many people it would take to keep your house and property secured. And then you'll wanna think about the number of people that you would have the hardest time turning away if they did come knocking at your door hungry and starving. And then fill up the rest of the numbers of people that you would need with people that you know that you can trust. So let's just say that you've came up with the number of people at 10. So then what you're going to need to be able to do is to be able to feed and house those 10 people for whatever length of time that you feel is a good amount of time before people could start feeding themselves again. For me personally, I like to have preps to last at least a minimum of one year because I feel that this helps me that no matter what time of year the SHTF may actually happen, that it would allow me to get through a full growing and harvesting season with gardening. So then if you've come up with 10 people that you would need to complete survival chores and around the clock security at your house, then you're going to want to pick out enough of the absolute cheapest foods and also enough heirloom seeds to feed these 10 people for the length of time that you deem is good enough. Now the way that I think that you could get this done reasonably cheap enough would be to purchase ramen noodles and then also just rice and beans and then also seeds for sprouting. Remember here, the point is not to feed them like royalty. The point here is that your budget during regular times will probably prohibit you from being able to feed them the best of long-term storage prepper food. So your budget is probably only going to allow you to feed them just enough to keep them alive. So for a 12-pack box of ramen noodles that's only going to cost $2, and a 50-pound bag of rice that's only going to cost $23, and a 50-pound bag of beans that's only going to cost $50, when you add all of these up, for $75 you could feed one person for nearly three months, including breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, once the balloon goes up and people start knocking on your door, with this particular plan, you can turn away the people that you don't trust and then tell the loved ones that you cannot turn away and then also tell the ones that you feel could actually be trusted and will turn out to be an asset to you. But you can tell them that you can feed them but that they will need to do their part to provide security and also do their part regarding survival chores. And hey, this is just another thought. If one of those people that come knocking at your door if their place is better than your place, if their place has more room and is safer than your place, then nothing keeps you and your newly formed group from packing everything up from your place and moving it to this better location. But now here's what I feel like is a huge factor. I have found that no matter how much you think you know somebody, no matter how much you think you can trust someone, it's very rare to be able to trust anybody 100%. So if you are thinking about doing this plan, then you have to ensure that you are worth more alive than dead to everybody that you would utilize under this plan. You want for whomever that you decide to invite in that they all want you to be alive because not only will you feed them in the meantime, but because you're also going to teach them how to feed themselves and their family in the future. Basically, they're not just going to need for you to be alive right now, but also that their future survival depends on you being alive and healthy and safe. So there's different ways about going about this. First, with the cheap food that you've put back for them, you can always tell them that a portion of that food is poison and that only you know which ones won't kill them. 
and then you can start learning valuable prepping skills now so that you can have that knowledge when that time comes. Basically, when you can feed somebody today and then tell them that you can teach them how to garden come the spring and teach them how to make their own soaps and how to make their water drinkable, etc., they're going to want to make sure that you stay alive so that they can learn from you for their future survival. Or maybe think about it this way, if SHTF happens and you possess a book that tells you step by step everything that you need to know to survive, and without that book you would end up dying, then you would protect that book with your life. So you want to be the equivalent of that book to those people. And then if you still worry that a person will kill you once they've learned how to garden and purify water, then you've done a poor job at picking who will be in your newly formed group. So put some good thought into it. And then while the rice and the beans and the ramen noodles and the sprouted seeds will grow really boring, as you get these people working for you and with you and also protecting you, the gardens that they work in will begin producing more variety of food and also nutrients for everyone. And folks, please don't think I'm offering a plan that's supposed to make you some kind of a ruler after SHTF, like you'd be some kind of a king of the hill, like if you have a pathetic life now that you'll suddenly be somebody that's important after the collapse. What I'm simply giving you here is a possible solution of how to turn a real problem for a lot of preppers into a solution, where community building and cooperation begins to help to turn things back to normal. And also realize that I am not saying that this is the best solution or the only solution. I know that everyone has different circumstances and some of you don't have the finances to buy even a month's worth of food for yourself, let alone other people. But what I am doing is offering an example of a solution and that if you do your own critical thinking and also read the comments below that you may be able to come up with a better solution that will be a better fit for you and your situation. And there's also a thousand other variables that come into a plan like the one I mentioned in this video, such as how many heirloom seeds one would need to purchase or how much garden space a person would need to feed per person, etc. But I just can't get into each imaginable variable as this video would never end. And the topic of this video is a good example of why I don't advertise the fact that I'm a prepper. I don't want people to even have the idea of knocking on my door after SHTF to begin with. And honestly, if things got that bad where people are actually starving to death, I won't be found at my house anyways. So let's hear from you so that we turn this video into an even better video for the community. What are some other dirt cheap foods that you think a person could purchase and put back in order to feed people that would come knocking? And what are some other important variables with the plan that I talked about? And please only mention the variables if you can also say how to mitigate them. And what are some other plans that you think would be good for dealing with starving loved ones? And what do you think are some great skills that a person could learn that would make non-preppers want to protect them so that this knowledge could be learned by the non-preppers? And if you would like to learn a common training scar that many self-defenders and preppers accidentally give themselves during firearms training, then click on the video link that should be appearing on the top of the screen just about now to possibly save your life should you get into a deadly use of force situation. And after SHTF, you'll want to grow as many foods that you can that will actually produce two foods instead of just one. So to learn a little bit more about that, then click on the video that should be appearing on the right side of the screen just about now. Anyways, folks, if you made it this far, hey, thank you very much for watching, and I pray that you have a good night.